about a lot of healing. And uh, because this is a healing ministry and it's a deliverance ministry, you've got to understand who we are, right? Now, healing and deliverance, two totally different things. But some people think you can group the two together. Some people think you've got to keep it separate. Some believe you only can operate in one and not the other. Uh, let me just tell you this. How many of you like peanut butter and jelly? Yeah? How many of you like just peanut butter? How many of you like just jelly? How many of you just like bread? Anyway, everything works together. It's however you want. Some churches only believe that healing is available to us. They don't want to understand deliverance. Uh, so I'm going to point out a couple things before we even do this. I want you to go to Mark 16. It's not on your notes. But before we jump into the book of Acts, you got to understand the foundation that Jesus left you. All right? Now, today alone, I went to the dentist this morning. And I was like, all right, Lord, dentist, oh, my favorite thing, you know, stick this needle thing under my gums and make me see Jesus' face 40 times. Because so. every time they hit that nerve under your gum line, we all see the Lord in all his glory, right? You see the, you see the light, you see the stars. And, and I was thinking to myself, well, okay. And, and then they come to the window and they say, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to have to wait a little while. Somebody, they had an emergency. So I'm like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. So I'm sitting there, and then this, this guy walks in, and he's like, he just walks in, and he's like stiff. And then he, he, he crouches over the seat for a while, trying to make his back end find the front end of the chair. Then I, I decide to help him. So I put my hand on my back. I say, hey, you need help? Yeah, I'll help you. And he goes, oh, my back. I go, why, uncle, too much activity. You got to lay off the Viagras. But I was joking, and he laughed. He laughed. He said, that's funny. He said, you funny guy. I said, uncle, you look a prayer for your back. He go, why, you the kind prayer kind guy. I said, I the kind prayer kind guy. And then the, the, the person in the window, the whatever you receptionist slash hygienist, tool washer, a bill collector, uh, yeah. the one after the dentist give you pain under your gum, she give you pain in your wallet. She stick her head out, she go, yeah, he the healer guy, guy, let him pray for you. And I was like, oh, okay. So, and he said, oh, yeah, go pray for me. I said, no, sit down then, stand up. So I did what I do, and I prayed for him, and he shake his feet on, and, you know. And then, before I even could put my hand on his back, he's like, hey, I still heal already. He's like, something came off my back. He's like, what, what was that? I said, oh, uncle, that was my hand. Remember, my hand was on your back. I was feeling you up earlier. <laughs> See, you got to have comedy. Some of you like, oh, where was the Lord? Hallelujah. <laughs> if laughter is the best medicine, I mean, you know that making people laugh is your best asset. Right? All right. If you don't make people laugh, then you're just an ASS. Anyway, so this guy got healed, and he's looking around, and all of a sudden, he says, wow, even my knees feel good. And he said, my feet. And he said, oh, wow, my neck too. I said, oh, you got everything, eh? You got the Holy Ghost anima, bro. You guys got to keep up, man. Come on, I'm not going to repeat the jokes for your sake, all right? And he's like, oh, I guess so. He can clean me out. And he's like, wow, wow. They don't do this at my church. I said, what church you go? And he said, because I'm not going to advertise. And he said, what time you service? Maybe I should come there and learn. I said, well, tonight we're teaching on healing and stuff. He goes, I don't care at night time. No, I don't care drive. I said, uncle, let me pray for your eye. Anyway. I was at the dentist, you monkeys. I'm not at the eye doctor. But anyway, he, I just told him, yeah, you can drive night time. He said, oh, when you come Makule, no can drive. He thought I lose my way. I thought, just tie string on the back of your car. You can find your way home. You guys keep it up. Some of you are way behind on this. You know, huh? Make sure the string long, though. No be Portuguese and like a four-feet string and drive around. Okay. So he was laughing and stuff, and he was saying, Hey, maybe if I don't come to your church, but if I tell other people come to your church for healing, you do that. I said, Sure. So today, 
at three o'clock had people he referred already came and got healed so that blossomed and bloomed into something else and these other people got healed and another family came and then I had another uh, couple flew in from Honolulu just for healing today the other ones drove all the way from Kamana because sometimes <laughs> sometimes it's easier for people fly from Honolulu than drive from Kamana to this church I don't know why that is but uh, praise the Lord yeah Oh, you know that you have the same gifts I do. Why? Because it's a double portion. You get a double portion. Everything I do, you're supposed to do double. What did you guys do today? So you're behind already, you see? You better keep up, all right? All right. So, with that being said, I want you to go to Mark 16, and I want you to take a look, go all the way to the bottom, all right? I'll show you some stuff that most churches and some of you that have been sitting under this ministry for a while, you understand what we believe and how we believe it. And yes, I'm a preacher that wears shorts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't like it, go find a guy with pants. All right. My shorts almost came down. Sorry. Eh? No, hey, that's a whole lot of offering. And no folded, no folded ones there if my shots gone. Okay. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. Good boy. Honey. Oh. oh, not that far. All right. Okay. Where are we? All right, is this Mark 16? Okay, right there. Later. Everybody say later. later. He appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table and he rebuked. Oh, if Jesus was here today, man, he'd be doing a lot of rebuking of unbelief. Let me tell you that. Why? Because read it. Yeah? Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Hallelujah. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel too. Is that a hard thing for you to do? No. How many of you know some critters in your life? Yeah, I know some. They wear clothes. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. So how many of you have been baptized in your life? Yeah, even as a Catholic? Yeah. You know what somebody told me one time? You know, I got baptized as a Catholic, as a baby. Never count. Yeah. I said, who said never count? He said, oh, because you got you to gotta be a certain age. age of count. I said, ah, baptize, baptize. No more age requirement. Check them out. You see how people make their own rules on top of the rules? Yeah. It's like saying, you can only go 45 if you're sitting backward, driving upside down. That makes sense, right? Why would you add things that aren't there? Right? It says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Amen. All right, now, here it gets interesting in verse 17. Why does it get interesting? Because almost every church just in our city alone does not do it. And why don't they do it? Because of this. Someone might get offended. Last time I checked, Jesus came to put you off on your end. Yeah? That's the truth. All right? And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name. First instruction Jesus gives is what? Cast out demons. In my name, they will cast out demons. So how many of you know that your first order of business in praying for anybody is to check the demonic realm first? You got to check. Now... A lot of grace and kingdom preachers don't like to talk about demons because they only want to talk about the finished work in Jesus. But Jesus talked about demons first. Yes. Right? In my name, they will cast out demons. demons. So you're going to have to address somebody. Now, you guys all see how I minister to people. I always address, I make them breathe. Because talking is a form of justification. That's the way I look at it. If I allow... A person to be talking or praying while I'm praying, then we're going to have a little debate going on here, and I don't want that. So what I do is I make them breathe into their nose and open them out wide and exhale. How many of you have seen me do that, even with some of you? And then begins the process, because as you're doing that, you open up channel ways that these things now, it's like a vacuum. They're being sucked out. Okay? And I've seen people get healed as soon as they grab their, their wrist and tell them start breathing. A lot of them get delivered already without me doing much else. All right? So in Jesus' name, they'll cast out demons. Now, let's say you have a person who's highly religious and you're praying for them. What do some of these people do as you are praying for them? 
They start praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, 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 they start saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I mean, you know that whatever demonic spirit is coming up has to stop at the name of Jesus. Okay, so I want you to just file that away for future reference because as long as this person is talking, these things can't be moving out. Okay, does that make sense to you? If you're saying the name of Jesus and nothing can cross the name of Jesus, what's going to come out? It's not going to pass the voice box. All right. Okay, so you all agree that Jesus said this? In my name they'll cast out demons? How many of you agree? Why? Who said so? Jesus. Jesus said so. So how many know that there's a lot of churches out here that don't want to even talk about demons because people will leave their church, thereby affecting the bottom line? You guys know that church is a business, right? The only reason they don't do things is because money may walk out the door. All right. Next thing Jesus says, they will speak with new tongues. I know 95%, maybe 98% of churches want to take a black pen and cut, just scratch out the demon part and the tongues part. If Jesus said you got to speak with new tongues, how I many of you know that it would make sense to do it? But most churches don't speak with new tongues. Why? The same reason as the first thing. Because... People may get offended. And if they get offended and they walk out the door, what happens? Their dollar signs walk out the door as well. So there's a lot of churches that don't do it. There's some churches in Hilo, they, they've invited me and I've gone up and I've, I told them before I even ministered. This was way back in the day when I was accepted widely by everybody. I'll tell them this set of scriptures. This is what we're doing. I'm not deviating from the plan. If this is the plan Jesus left, who am I to overrule Jesus? Amen. Amen? You guys agree? All right, so don't get offended if you hear somebody praying in tongues. It's in the Bible. Don't get offended if you hear somebody casting out a demon in Jesus' name. Why? Because it's, it's in the Bible. All right, verse 18, they will take up serpents. You guys know what serpents are? It's not real life snakes that you whip around in the church service. And you start playing around with... No, serpents is a spirit of deception, right? So for us, according to this, it says here, in my name, they will cast out demons, speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents. So that means you'll be able to come against a spirit of deception and win every single time. Amen? Amen? All right, you guys know what winning means? It don't mean losing. Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. A winner. How many of you are a winner? You got, some of you never do them. Are you a winner? Show me your winner sign. All right. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All right. Amen. How many of you agree? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yep. And when they don't agree with you, you show them Jesus. Some of you are thinking I'm obscene. Anyway. Hallelujah. They'll take up serpents, all right? Some of you know that the spirit of deception will come into the church is what it's saying. And if they drink anything deadly, drinking doesn't mean you're going to... Inu, bra, inu. No, does not mean that. It means that if you drink in any kind of deceptive spirit into your thought patterns, it will what? By no means hurt them, yeah? You guys see that? So it's telling you, when you do deliverance, automatic, you're going to cast out demons, speak with new tongues. A spirit of deception will come. And what is a spirit of deception? It's trying to get you to think that it's deadly. Casting out devils in church is deadly. Speaking in tongues is deadly. How many of you have been, at, been to a church that tells you don't do that stuff? Oh, we don't do that because people get offended. What are you dumb or what? All right. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick. And here's the part where it turns into healing now. You guys see it turn into healing? It went from deliverance to healing. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So how many of you know that when all of that other stuff is done, all you do is lay hands? So if it's not a deliverance demonic issue, it's a healing issue. Lay hands on the sick and they... All right. How many you like? They will recover. So that means that's a process. Healing is a process. Deliverance is instantaneous. Okay, you all cool with that? 
Okay, good. All right, you're dismissed. Oh, wait. Got some work to do here. All right. Peter in Acts 2.41. Let's take a look here. All right. The top three you can wait on. We're going to go in numerical order because it's on the sock puppet page. You guys like the picture of the sock puppet? They're doing ministry to each other. Okay. Hallelujah. Acts 2. Oh, hang on. And verse 41. You guys all there? Okay, I'm not. Hang on. Okay, Acts 2, 41. Oh, wait a uh. Okay. All right. Up, up, up. Out of way. Okay. Right there. You guys see this here? Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So your first thing, and you have it, right? It's on your notes. Do you have it? On this one here? You guys can read that. I want you to see how it's written here. It says, Peter's anointed preaching and, say the word, ministry. Ministry. How many know that all of you are in ministry? Okay? Because later on in the, in the epistles, it says, help shepherd the flock and do the work of the ministry. So what is the work of the ministry? This is one of those things that you got to be able to do as a minister. So a lot of you took this ministry agreement. All right, I'm going to give you an ordination and an impartation, and you're going to have a, a certificate, and you, you can go tell all your friends that I went to CrossNet and I got my ordination. And they'll say, so what Bible courses did you take? Jesus. Okay, wait now. Let me clarify this. Now, how many of you believe in Ephesians 2.6? Where are you seated? Okay, so did you have to earn that seat? Okay, so did you have to earn a ticket or a degree to sit in the heavenly places? No. So, hallelujah. You're seated in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. Did you have to earn that? No, because he paid the price, so you just get it automatically. So a degree paper should come to you. My Portuguese friend, he always tell me, what, bro? Automatic. Everybody say, automatic. So if you want ordination, it's automatic. And when your friends say, what Bible courses did you take? Did you take eschatology? Did you take numerology? Then you can say, no, I just took Jesus. <laughs> Seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So I took on Jesus. Jesus took on me. I'm sit down. I'm relaxed. Let the courses begin. You know what the greatest course of study is in ministry? Oh, man, maybe you don't understand ministry. Ministry is from a seated position of rest. So... You as a casual observer in the rested, seated position are observing stupid people. Amen? You got to understand how ministry works, guys. You will be bombarded with all manner of stupidity. Okay? As long as you know that before you get your ministerial credential, you are prepared. Should I do the Boy Scout thing? You are prepared... For stupid people. The only reason you get burned by stupid people is when you act stupid too. Hallelujah. All right. As long as you know going in that people are going to attempt to burn you, then you're good. All right. Because people are people. Amen. How many of you know some people that resemble that remark? Hallelujah. Again, in kamakazi. All right. So Peter's anointed preaching and look at your notes and say the word ministry on the day of Pentecost caused 3,000 people to be born again and follow Jesus. Are you happy about that? Yeah. So at best, all you got to do is share Jesus with people and they respond. You know how you share Jesus with people? You don't go like this. Hallelujah. You need Jesus. You better get to heaven or you're going to burn in hell. No. Well, how many people will get saved if you do that? 
they look at you like crazy. You know how people come to Jesus? They follow you as you follow Christ. All right. Jesus said, come, follow me. And he wasn't like this. <laughs> Amen? Jesus is going to come follow me. And he's going, you follow Christ, everything's good. You stop following Christ, everything falls apart in your life. And it can go fast. I just had an episode today with somebody from our church that has decided to pull out of our church. The crumbling comes quick. Right? The dismantling of everything God has built up can just be blown away. All right. Praise the Lord. Ministry. All right. Acts 3, verse 1 through 8. Hallelujah. Almost. Okay. Now, you guys see this. Now, look for us. For this one word in this scripture, okay? Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. So, ninth hour, you start from 6 a.m. and then you count nine hours, which would be 3 o'clock afternoon. And you guys see this? There's a word here. And a certain man. How many of you know that your ministry is to a certain person on any given day? You know, I don't think it was by accident. You know, today my, my dentist appointment was at 9 o'clock. The nurse or whoever she is, receptionist, tool cleaner, bill collector, said, can you come at 9.30 instead? And I could have been all like, what? My appointment is 9 o'clock. You set that appointment six months ago. How come now you like them half an hour later? I could be a, a real numbskull. I could be a real idiot. But sometimes things happen. Because what if I said no? What are they going to do anyway? They would have sent me to another day. So, certain man, certain place, certain time. Always look for those keys in any scripture that you're looking at, all right? Certain place, certain time, certain people. Now, when I sat there, my appointment was at 9.30, and they told me it's going to be about 15, 20 more minutes. And I could have been like, oh, hell no. <laughs> but I did, you just got to take it sometimes. Like, oh, well. And then you got to start wondering, why are all these things happening? Because Jesus is about to set you an appointment with a certain man, at a certain place, at a certain time. How many of you believe in coincidence? Maybe. How many of you believe in luck? Maybe. Lucky you came to church then tonight. Anyway, so this guy comes in about 9.45. 9.45. Now just think if my appointment was at 9, I don't even run into this guy. I leave by 9.30 probably. I'm out. I don't even see this guy. But God has a plan for everything. Right? If you are open and available, God will use you for anybody, any place. You know? And sometimes it doesn't take, Uncle, you need help. Sometimes it's not even that. It's just a little touch, a, sh a handshake, a, a, a back pat. You know, and just get somebody healed. Or a joke, get somebody laughing. And me, I do them all. Amen. Holy Ghost animal, bro. We go all the way. We get them all, right? Certain place, certain time, certain people, right? So, a certain man lame from his mother's womb. What does that mean, lame from his mother's womb? Born crippled. Basically, he's crippled. All right, since he was born. He was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. You got to understand why they would lay him there because he can't work. He can't provide for himself. So he is crippled. They have to carry him there and leave him there. And he has to beg all day because he has no form of feeding himself other than that. There is no government social service agency that's going to provide him meals on wheels. Because at this time, wheels were hard to come by. Probably. Right? So you take a look here. To ask alms or beg from those who enter the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask for 
alms. He's asking for anything, money. You guys see these guys standing over there by vitamin shop at Walmart? Right? They're standing there. They all can, they all can work. What are they doing? They're just waiting because some compassionate person is going to come and say, ah, you know what? Here. Because they know there's thousands of people go through there. See, I, I don't know. I might be a certain man at a certain place at a certain time, only see these certain guys every single time. <laughs> and they always change, but the sign is the same. True. Something wrong with that. All right. Now here's the key for you, verse 4. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said this, Look at us. So how many know that you've got to get these certain people to look at you? Look. Because the windows to the soul are the eyes. You can actually look. And sometimes you see something peeking out at you. Come out. In Jesus' name, that's when you, you can do your ministry. All right. So... He gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Now, how many know he's expecting cheese and crackers, bro? But what does he get? He gets a little bit of a lecture, in a way. Expecting to receive, Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. And what does he say? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and... Walk, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Did he have to do some kind of Pentecostal tap dance? No. What did he do? Look at me. I don't got no silver and gold, but what I do have, I'm packing heat. You guys remember Sunday, for those of you who are here? We're all packing heat. You know what that means? You're packing the anointing of God. Silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have, I give to you. You see? In the name. Now, here's the key part. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So, I want you to stop right now. I want everybody to stand up. All right? I want you to stand up. Look around. Look around. Look around. Hmm. All right? Find a partner. Find a partner or two. All right? And I want you to take them by the right hand. It doesn't matter. And this is just a hand thing, so we're not going to be. All right. Take them by the right hand. It's a right hand thing, right hand to right hand. Hallelujah. All Portuguese. You guys never read the word up there. All right. Right hand to right hand. And then you tell the person, take turns. One person say to the other, say, look at me. Silver and gold I do not have. But such as I do, <laughs> you guys know the rest, right? Silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up. Just say rise up because everybody's standing up. I don't see nobody lying down. Rise up. In the name of Jesus and be healed. All right, you, can you do that? Now the other person, other person speak. Look at me. Silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up. Rise up. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Did you know that that right there is enough to get a crippled guy walking? And it's enough to get a Portuguese laughing because all of you was laughing saying it. But you know that you are packing heat. You know that healing is instantaneous. How hard was that to do? Not very. Not very? Oh, not very farm. All right. It's easy. It's not. But you know what? Religion likes to make it complicated. What if I wasn't prayed up that day? What if I was in sin? What if I swore at my dog? What if I spit in the bird cage? What if I peed in the fish tank? I, You see, these are the things that religion likes to qualify you to do ministry, but there's no qualification for ministry. Because what did Peter say? Silver and gold. You know what he's saying? I don't got no bloody credentials. But what I do have, I'm packing heat in the spirit, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. In this scenario, he says, rise up and walk. You see? 
Hallelujah. If you tell Pentecostals, rise up and walk, they leave the church. <laughs> All of a sudden, they're out the door. Hey, ho, hey, ho, ho. Come back. We're not Paul's service yet. Oh, because Pentecostals like to follow things to the T, baby. To the T. In a court, people, they go, we got to get cleansed. We got to get sin free. We need to worship. Good night. Relax. You see why people need an animal? Seriously. They're all bound up and stuff. But that's the way religion is. It likes to make you think you got to go the extra mile. You got to do the extra thing. When Jesus said, it is finished, he never said, it is finished, except that you got to do this, 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 and that. No. Now, some of you are saying, well, what about this ministry agreement? You have 10 things. Yeah, that's my qualifications. I don't want no idiots walking alongside of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. You guys know why I don't want no idiots walking alongside of me? Because I got to explain your idiosyncrasies to other people. And I don't have time to explain what an idiot you are. Hallelujah. Part of this ministry agreement, if you take a look, it's tithing and giving, which you should already be doing because that opens the channel ways to blessing. Amen. So if you're not tithing and giving, don't cry about where you at in life and don't cry. Period. Second one is attendance at service unless you're working. Is that reasonable? Yeah? Attendance at service. Hello? Hard to get what you need for the week unless you come get it where it's served. Number three, serving in a ministry. What is a ministry? I don't know. I came today. I ministered to some people at the church. I went to the bathroom. The ministry of helps left me without toilet paper. And after I washed my hand, they left me without paper towel. And yesterday I was here ministering and I had a clogged sink plugged up and full of black water. I was like, hallelujah. <laughs> Is that a ministry? It's kind of bad when the pastor notices. Can you imagine a new visitor? What the heck is this? What, I'm going to wipe my hand on my pants? Yeah. Marcy is taking full responsibility. All right. And then I came yesterday to minister, and all the lights were on. These ones over here. You see these tree candles? They all were on greeting me. Shine a light on me, Salomela. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Turn them off. Click, click, click. That was hard. Serving in a ministry. Did you know that picking up a piece of paper off the floor that you see is a ministry? Why? Because you don't want somebody else to see it. So you pick it up. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Serving in a ministry. Number four, notifying the authority of any and all absences. Is that hard to call somebody and tell them? You know, if you're sick and you're not going to work, what? You just don't show up. You got to call somebody and I don't know you're not coming. Huh? Not bringing the ministry into, in, into disrepute. You're supposed to say into disrepute. You know what that means? You're not going to be embarrassing Jesus out there by doing stupid things. How hard is that? So that means you're not going to be running up and down Pui Bay in the nude with on Heineken light in your hand. Is that reasonable? Well, singing at the moon or calling me for bail. Is that all right with you? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, number six, observing social media etiquette. That means you don't show us your cleavage online. And that goes for you men on the backside too. We don't like seeing okole cleavage. Right? Or showing finger online and saying Jesus is Lord. Look, at here's the way to heaven. Right. Yeah. So social media etiquette is a funny thing. Now I'll tell you a little story about social media etiquette. I I am a joker by nature. Amen. I was coaching this year. I went out to a certain high school. I went to the restroom and I look on the wall and it says something about don't stand on the toilet.
Okay, now is that funny to you too? Teolet. All right, so right underneath that, it says, do not throw paper towels in the teolet. They were consistently wrong twice. Teolet. So I took a picture and I put it on Facebook. The next day, I got called into the athletic director's office at YKL High School where I was coaching. And he's like, you know what? <laughs> he said, I know you coach Kamehameha, you coach St. Joe and Christian Libya. And all. He said, but over here, DOE, we get certain things that we cannot post online. And he said, you cannot make fun of another school. I wasn't making fun of the school. I was making fun of the words that were misspelled at the school. All of you learn how to spell toilet. I would assume in about the second or third grade. And how do you spell toilet? T O Y. No. T I O. No. I know some third graders not going to misspell that sign. You know what I found out later? That an adult made that sign that graduated from Waiakea. The very school I'm coaching at, he's a lifeguard at the pool out there at a certain high school south of Hilo. And he spelled the sign Teolet twice to make it twice as nice. I don't know about you. To me, that's funny. To the DOE, that is not funny at all. So they shame. Yeah, exactly. They shamed that somebody found them. You know where this was? In the girls' locker room. Okay? Evidently, girls are so focused on the social aspects of going to the bathroom, they don't look at the signs. Anyway. Anyway. Because uh, when you travel to the certain school, your locker room is always the opposite. So, so I took a picture and I thought, ha, ha, ha. This is hilarious. Uh-huh. I got called down for that, man. So how many of you know that even in the body of Christ, you've got to be even a little more careful about what you do, especially if you're going to get a ministerial credential, amen? All right, number seven, regular meetings with the senior pastor. That's me. If I decide to call a meeting with you and you just meet me and we just have a meeting, how hard is that? Not hard at all, unless you're going to tell me you're busy. Because my answer to that is I'm busy too. Okay? So you guys know if I say, let's have a regular meeting, let's talk about your ministry, let's see where you're at. It behooves you to say, yes, when can you meet? And I'll tell you when I can, and we'll match up. How hard is that? Shouldn't be hard. All right. Abstaining from a lifestyle of SIN. You guys know what SIN is in this church? It's self-induced nonsense. Most of you know that we don't believe in the power of sin. We just believe in the power of self-induced nonsense. Stupidity on display. All right? So don't do dumb things. Amen? Number nine, studying the word daily. Number ten, praying daily. Is that hard to do? Ten things? Do it. And you can do that. Silver and gold have I none, but what I do have I give unto you. Is that hard? No, it's easy. Why? Because you pack in agreement. How many you know that when you agree to something, great things happen? Because you're not in opposition. You're not debating something. All right, so you see this now? So in your notes, the crippled beggar at the temple gate received his miracle as Peter, look at your paper, as Peter, as Peter, oh my God. You guys not reading. Received his miracle as Peter, say it louder, ministered the name of Jesus. So uh, how do you get people healed? Number one way is the name of Jesus. Number one. Right? The third one, just read it. The healing of multitudes in the streets of Jerusalem took place because the anointing ministered from Peter's shadow. So how I many you know that he was so anointed that even his shadow, that the Hawaiians had to take the kapusis? Anyway. Right. See, in Hawaii, the shadow cause you to die in Jesus that causes you to live yeah 
All right, look at the fourth one here. Stephen ministered in signs and wonders after he was ministered to by the Holy Spirit. The next one, Philip the deacon minister held a great revival in Samaria with powerful preaching followed by miraculous signs which caused the whole city to be touched by the anointing of God. All right, that's Acts 8, verses 5 through 8. The next one, the Holy Spirit ministered to Cornelius and the Gentiles, causing them to be born again and be baptized in the Spirit. Are you seeing all these examples? You can take this and go study and see the powerful ways that ministry works. The next one, ministering by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Paul cast the spirit of fortune telling out of a demon possessed woman. Right? And you compare that with Jesus' ministry in Luke eleven twenty. The last one, by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, special miracles, signs, and wonders manifested through the hands of Paul. Now, how many know that you are no different than anybody that has lived throughout time? You are packing heat. The packing heat that you got is the anointing of God on your life, and you just pass that on. Now, if you're going to be a fool out there all the time, then things aren't going to happen well for you. Okay? So as you ponder this ministry agreement, sign it tonight. All right? You need to sign it tonight. You don't have days to think about it. All right? If you want to be imparted to, then you need to sign it tonight. And I'll have everything ready for Sunday service. And you will become a minister out of CrossNet Ministries International in Hilo, Hawaii. And when Apostle Rosado comes down in a few months, he will do the same thing. He will lay hands on you as an apostle of God and reinforce it. So in the meantime, you still get it. And then when he comes down, he'll even increase, every increasing faith. Amen? Is that cool with you? All right. I'm good. You good? Something like, oh, this it? Why, you like some more? We're going to pray. Amen? How many of you like to pray? Well, whether you like to pray or not, we're going to pray. Amen? All right, let's stand. I'm going to pray because that's what I do. I pray. I pray, you pray, we all pray, amen, and we want Jesus move. All right, is God good? Of course he is. All right. All right, right where you're at. If you need prayer, raise your hand. We're going to surround you. Okay? All right. Whoever needs prayer, lift your hand, and then people will surround you. Okay? Look around. Look around. Move, move, move. Come on, you guys. Whoever needs prayer, one back here, one over here. All right? Just put hands on people. All right? Some back there. All right. All right. The person receiving prayer, I want you to just bow your head. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to impart into them the power gifts on display. We thank you, Lord. For whatever is ailing them, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, in and out of their body, in the name of Jesus. I want you to start breathing. If you're a person that's receiving healing, in through your nose, open your mouth wide, exhale. All right, next one. Inhale, in through your nose, open your mouth wide, exhale harder, in the name of Jesus. Now shake your feet out, one at a time. Shake it out, lift it off the ground, kick it out. We just broke the shackles off. You are no longer bound to the earth. We thank you, Lord, that they are a free agent. We thank you, Lord, for this healing and this deliverance in the name of Jesus. Okay? Deep breath. I want you to bend now. Bend. Deep breath. Pause. Deep breath. Cough. 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 Come out in Jesus' name. You cannot stay. You cannot remain. Whatever it is on a deliverance level, you must come out. We curse every evil spirit to its roots in the name of Jesus. You must depart and never to return. You'll be escorted to the pit of hell and to free fall. You will never, ever be able to come back. We right now curse you to your roots. Leave never to return. I come against every spirit of rebellion, every spirit of envy, strife, and division. I come against every spirit of rejection and jealousy. I break your hold off of this person now in the name of Jesus. We exact the spirit of forgiveness now. This is a forgiven person who is a forgiving person. 
We thank you, Lord, that right now these people are healed and more than healed. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, I command every tumorous growth to shrink in the name of Jesus. I right now open up anything that's clogged up. You must open up and flow freely in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord. Any pain, any ache, any sickness, any illness, any disease must be removed in the name of Jesus. Take a deep breath. If you feel a tickle in your throat or a pain in your chest, I want you to cough that out in Jesus' name. Come out, come out. In Jesus' name, into the waiting arms of the warring and ministering angels who will take you again to the pit of hell, never to return. Lord, right now, uh, every void and gap created by the vacancy of these evil entities are now filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way in this body. Lord, there are some in this place. I want everybody right now, lift your hands, take a deep breath. Everybody, 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 in through your nose, close your eyes, open wide. Cough. Go. Everybody gets something tonight. Everybody. In Jesus' name. Everybody gets something. You just exchange something evil for something good. Right now, to the bottom of the barrel, Lord, the breath of God goes and brings life into limbs that are broken. Things that are dormant or dying, Lord, are now made alive and regenerated by the presence of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the anointing. Rem burden removing, yoke destroying, power of God. Thank you, Lord, that everyone here has a right to be healed and whole. And we thank you for that now. Thank you for that now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, I want everybody in here to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So everybody find somebody, put your hand on somebody. All right, this is automatic, okay? This is automatic. I want you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, okay? So if you're a person not baptized in the Holy Spirit, here's the evidence. You, you don't speak in tongues if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have the gift of speaking in tongues. So right now it may seem strange. The Bible said that we need to do it, so let's do it. I want you all to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus... I freely receive the gift that you freely give. I now receive the impartation of fire. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit of God, and I will speak with the evidence of tongues. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus that I am baptized in fire, and all the old man is burned away, and all that's left is the new man, the new creature in Christ Jesus. This creature is spiritual in nature, and he speaks the language of heaven that the enemy cannot understand. So tonight, Lord, we begin the process of speaking the heavenly language while we're still here on earth. On earth, as it is in heaven, we speak the heavenly language now in the name of Jesus. I want you to copy me. La 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 Faster, louder. Elo brukura bahera shu. She turkura talabarkon bratuna brasu. In Jesus' name, we all pray the heavenly language. We all speak the communication of the heavenly realm. Lambrasu itela kura tabra koranda bashu. In Jesus' name, faster, louder. Go, faster. Go, 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 go. You don't need to copy me now. Go, 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 go. Labratuna brasu toraka brakura na batala brakola basu. It is a brahun, the brakur, the bashat, braku. It is a brahur, the patatalato, brakah, braku, sha. She tell a brahur, and the bakita, the key, brakur, the patal, the brashol, the brasso. In Jesus' name. Okay, stop. Take a deep breath. This is how we know that it took. Take a deep breath again. And begin to pray again. Ready? Set. Go. Labratura cobra shoot the braco, a tail of bracour and a bate to the cor and a basso. It makes no sense to your head because it doesn't come from your head. De la and the braco horror of a cor and the bacor and the bachan, the bracota to the cobra, bracor of the bracor of the balarabafu. 
ete brashun da brakho la braka ete lebron da brakur da batutu bashan da blaso the power of god may hit you now the fire the baptism of pentecost comes upon you like a flame of fire it begins to burn away all the old man it begins to burn away the dross it begins to burn away the chaff you are now a new creature in Christ Jesus speaking a language that you've never spoken before ete le brakur da batan da brakur ba shuto la baso louder faster go ahead come on then the lady who are care about shoot to brakur ho do ron ba sala go this is where the power of god comes from this is where it comes from you speak things into existence before you do it din de le yur to bashu change your syllables now change it kick boroku era shata brakur na bate de la boroku that language changes all the time bin da bradil boroku horaba shukurun da betito la la braku kai la da da do kur na bate to ko braku horun na bashu to basu la da 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 do braku in jesus name in jesus name you are now a power packed citizen of heaven etele baksu you are now speaking the laws and ordinances of heaven through your earthly language your earthly tongue becomes heavenly in jesus name speak creation birth things forth in jesus name bin da brakur na bashi ta la ku se do la braka ha to ko braku ran na basho la braso hallelujah lift your hands everybody lift your hands la la na baka we worship you lord We praise your holy name. We worship you, Lord. We praise your holy name. We worship you, Lord. Say it. I worship you, Jesus. I praise your holy name in Jesus name. I praise your holy name. I worship you, Jesus. In Jesus name. Now I want you to agree in prayer with me and say, Father God, bless this land that we live on. bless every living creature and person lord on this land called the big island of hawaii we apply the blood of jesus to the entire island from the top of the mountains to the coast of the sea in and out of every human lord in jesus name we take back this island for your glory we wash this island whiter than snow by the blood of jesus That means every cancer spirit must be dealt with and put away in Jesus name. Anything not of you, Lord, any sickness, illness and disease now is washed down out into the oceans. Lord, we thank you that every person has the right to know Jesus, but they only know Jesus through us. So give us a countenance of light and let us shine before men. Lord, we surrender all these things, Lord. We surrender it all. This land is your land, Lord. We surrender it to you, and we thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you that there will be some that resist the last moves of God, but we thank you, Father God, that we are in the midst of your will. So, Lord, we love you, and we thank you for healing and deliverance flowing out of us. The power of God coming through the gift of speaking in tongues, Lord, and all the ministry gifts found in Ephesians four and First Corinthians twelve. come on board and flow out of us like a river of living water we ask all these things in Jesus name amen, amen. give the lord a hand god bless you god bless you all right we're going to take our ohana fun and then we're out of here how's that easy amen get an envelope now you're going to want to give because you love jesus amen all right the ohana fun is to pay the bills of the house amen there are bills yes i know All right so whatever it is that the holy spirit tells you to give give that don't give any more or any less